Saint Philomena, our uh, little princess, was a foreigner when she died in Rome. Well, as you all well know the story, um, her, she, wa she had Greek parents, a king and a queen of a little island kingdom that was threatened to be vanquished by the Emperor Diocletian. And, well, uh, her parents took her to Rome with them in order to plead uh, before the emperor for mercy for their little island kingdom. And when the emperor fancied the beauty of Saint Philomena, who at that time was maybe 12 or 13 years old, he proposed her marriage. And in exchange for the safety of the kingdom of her parents, and also in exchange for all the wealth, all the jewelry that she would ever want in life. And so Philomena, uh, having consecrated her virginity to Christ, refused uh, his proposal, and such refusal angered the emperor, who had her imprisoned for 40 days and tortured with scourges and with arrows and with an attempted drowning in the river Tiber until she was beheaded. I would like to uh, think that, uh, well, St. Philomena passed on to eternity in, in, um, in a very low-profile manner because she was a foreigner. She was Greek, unlike, for example, Agnes of Rome, who uh, died in the uh, same age that uh, she was, no, she had. Agnes was, was from Rome, and therefore she became a high-profile saint. But uh, um, uh, Philomena, well, she must have died in a very obscure way. Now, how did you know, Father, that she died, or why do you say, Father, that St. Philomena died in obscurity? It's very simple. Her remains were forgotten in the catacombs for a thousand or more years until they were discovered more than 200 years ago. Now, in, a, in the cultus of the saints, before canonizations were ever invented by the church, the cultus would begin with what? Well, it would begin with... Um, uh, the people, the church, the members of the Christian community going to the tomb of the martyr on the death anniversary of that saint. And in accordance with the funeral, uh, the funeral um, customs of that time, the yearly death anniversary would be marked with a visit of family members to the tomb, and there they would eat a funeral meal. The Christians would go yearly to the tomb of the martyr and, well, there have mass instead of a funeral meal. And that would be the origin of the cultus of the saints, the cultus of the martyrs. Now, 
Philomena's body was forgotten for thousands of years, which meant that uh, people did not go to her tomb. It also it, it meant that uh, people did not come to venerate her tomb that was tucked in the darkness of the catacombs. Why would that happen? Well, to me, it's because she was a foreigner. Remember that they only went, she went with her parents to Rome only to plead before the emperor. And when she refused the marriage proposal, she was immediately imprisoned for 40 days. So she, might, she must have just stayed in prison. She must just have stayed in Rome for a little over 40 days until the time of her martyrdom. She was forgotten until her body was discovered more than 200 years ago. But what accounted for what accounted for uh, the immediate uh, popularity of this wonder worker saint? Well, when her remains were transferred to her shrine in Moniano, Paulinia Rico immediately, uh, who was then very, very sick, was healed by the intercession of Saint Philomena. And the healing of Polinierico began so, a, a series of so many other miracles, so many other wonderful things that were obtained by the prayer of the saint. So much so that she was called the Thaumaturga of the 19th century. The wonder worker of the 19th century. And it was the wonders, the miracles, that uh, were answered by Saint Philomena that accounts for her being a true gift to the modern world, a missionary. Look at the Holy Gospel today. Our Lord said to his apostles, make this proclamation, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But immediately after saying, make this proclamation, he said, cure the sick, raise the dead, Cleanse the lepers, drive out demons. The apostles were able to win souls for Christ because the preaching, their preaching of the gospel was accompanied by signs and wonders. The sick were cured. The dead were resurrected. Lepers were cleansed. And demons driven out of the possessed. Signs and wonders accompanied the preaching of the word. The signs and wonders verified the message of the gospel. The signs and wonders convinced the pagans to believe in the gospel because the signs and wonders were evidences of the power of Jesus Christ. In this manner, Saint Philomena, who lived and died and was buried in obscurity, reading today, God 
shows the little ones. True to the second reading today, God shows those who were not known by no one, the obscure, the little ones, the poor, so that mankind may do no boasting before God. This little saint, this little princess of heaven, chosen because she was small, chosen because she was little, chosen because she was obscure, now draws many souls close to Christ by the wonders and the miracles that she, with which she responds to the prayers of her devotees. May the graces and the miracles that we have received through the intercession of Saint Philomena draw us closer to Jesus and Mary. May it be, may the miracles be by themselves a proclamation that the kingdom of heaven is near to us. O Mary conceived without sin.